Welcome back to another episode of Breaking Down the Barriers. Fitz Houston here. Today we're talking about the politics in acting. The people go, politics? I'm, well, well, you guys running for office like Reagan? No, no, no. <laughs> I don't mean actors getting into politics. I'm talking about the politics that are involved in acting. No. <laughs> politics and acting has nothing to do with acting. It's somebody bringing you into a project simply because they know you, they're doing a favor. I mean, it has nothing to do with the audition process, so don't even take it personal. And matter of fact, when you find out what happened, then you just understand that that's part of the acting business. That, that old saying, he who picks a rose must accept the thorns it bears. The rose is the beautiful things about acting. The thorns are politics and acting, other things that are more stressful that you have no control over. That's just part of the game. The thorns are part of the bush. You know that rejection is a part of acting. Politics are part of acting. Nepotism, people hiring relatives. I mean, all that's a part of acting that can distract your performance and what you're doing. All you worry about is going in that audition and knocking their socks off. If somebody gets cast for other reasons, the casting director knows that, and they many times are upset. As a matter of fact, the reason I'm doing these series of tips is because a lot of things I have personally experienced that I'm just sharing with you that are actually things I experienced. But I'm just letting you understand in the politics and acting, those are the types of things that drive people to stress, to drinking, to drugs, suicide, eventually getting out the business because people see acting on film and TV, they say, oh, it looks like so much fun. Acting is fun. But in the process of having all that fun, you're dealing with the rejection, the politics, the nepotism, all the things that I'm just discussing in this episode that are what actors are having to deal with day after day that you don't see on camera in the actual final product. And so, I mean, and you cannot give yourself, along with politics, you cannot give yourself a time limit as to when you're going to make it. You don't have the control over when you're going to make it. You have control over uh, socializing and networking. You have uh, uh, go to sh uh, workshops and showcase your talent. You got all kinds of choices in your in your control over keeping yourself visible, whether it's in showcases and, and, and talent shows and agent showcases and, and casting director showcases, networking events where you are, are the whole event is about introducing yourself to a, produ a producer director. Everybody's wearing a name tag, says actor, producer, director, and the whole purpose of the networking event is to walk up to each other and tell each other what you're doing, what you're working on, and many times jobs come out of that because in a social setting, you'll hear more information about what's going on in Hollywood than you'll ever hear in a submission setting when you read the magazine and try to see what's going on. In one networking event, you can hear about a producer say, well, you know what, I'm working on a project on Monday that I need somebody for. Matter of fact, you know what, uh, come and talk to me next week, the beginning of the week. Because they're looking at you right now and they never knew you before now but yet you're right for something in their project which you would not have found out about in time if it had been the regular submission process so that's why as an actor you're doing everything you can because the business is already hard enough being in the right place at the right time you don't know how many years you're going to be in acting before you make it and make it really is not really even what it thinks see a lot of people say that person was an overnight sensation persons that have been in the business 30, 40 years is not an overnight sensation. The overnight sensation just means they suddenly hit a project which put their name out front overnight. They're not overnight. They've been out there busting their butt and hitting that grind year after year, working their craft. And just because you, the audience, don't know them doesn't mean they're not out there busy doing their work. It's just when they're suddenly known and everybody knows who that is, that's what overnight sensation really is. It's not the person is new, it's that the person's name has suddenly come into fame because of a particular project that pushed their name out there. But you have no control over when that actually happens. Like I said, you have control over everything else. But when it happens, you need to be ready for it because that's what we're working for, to get that big break. That's what the big break is, to get your name in lights and, and be known what you're doing as a household name. But when you get that break, do not 
not be ready for it so that you got the break and you don't do anything with it and now the project's over and you disappear into oblivion because you didn't really use the break you finally got. And what I mean by use a break, if you get a break, when you suddenly got everything at your access, doors will open for you during that break that will never be open when you're just auditioning and nobody knows who you are. So when you get that break and people know who you are, you, you get endorsements, whatever, you get a, 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 a personal manager or you get a, a PR person, get as many uh, publicity uh, sightings and interviews. I mean, you do as much visibility as you can during the break project because those doors are open because the show's on right now, everybody knows who you are right now, and they want to talk to you and find out more about you, so that's really working your break. Because then once you do that, it may very easily lead to another project because of the visibility of the one you did. If you just sit back and enjoy your break, do nothing with it of the things I just mentioned. The break is now over, the project's over, but you didn't use it to promote your visibility and people find out more about you, they really like you, they want to see you in other things, then that's why sometimes you say, well, whatever happened to this actor? They were, they were dynamite in a particular film. Once the film was over, it seemed like they went poof, vanished into acting oblivion. <laughs> and, and see, even that is not totally in your control because Hollywood is very fickle. They like you one moment, they don't. We usually all, use always the term, well, you know, why are certain types of people working all the time? We just say flavor of the month. Right now, you're the flavor that they like. That means they're going to be pushing you and everybody who's in your type is who's working the most this year. Next year, a different look is the flavor of the month. Uh, now, your talent didn't change, it's just who Hollywood thinks is the way to look is now the flavor of the of the particular time. And so you can't let that distract you. The, I kind of put that in politics too because, because that stuff that can all drive an actor crazy trying to figure out what did you do wrong and you didn't do anything wrong, the flavor of the month changed. No, what you do is still be your consistent self and go out there and blow their socks off every audition, still doing the same things, being invisible, even if you're not the flavor of the month, because those will still lead to jobs. Flavor of the month just means your look is really what they want to put in the lead roles right now, because that's the way they want you to look. But it doesn't mean you stop acting, because there are other roles other than the lead. Matter of fact, I have a few friends that do a lot of lead roles, and the pressure that they talk about to me sometimes is like, well, you know, and I love being the lead, but but I can't change. Uh, this particular person had a, you know, he was one of the regulars on one, one of the soaps years ago, and he he was concerned. Well, you know, I can't get gray. I can't I can't get out of shape. I can't do this. So he was actually starting to stress out. Now he's on he was on a hit soap opera, but what was driving him crazy was the fear of physically changing because his character was a hit, but you know soap operas don't really advance in time. Uh, really fast because they're day by day in the real time and every now and then they'll jump 20 years <laughs> and you go like well that kid was seven years old yesterday now the next day he's 22 like, now that doesn't happen a lot but when it does happen if you're in the point where your aging cannot really change and you find yourself starting to change and have to work harder and harder just understand that's a pressure that exists if you're in a project where they don't want you to age quickly, you have to really be super disciplined in taking care of yourself to try to keep your look as much as possible the same. So I put all these in the politics acting, just basically meaning anything that's not dealing directly with acting that affects you getting jobs, not getting jobs, being visible, not visible. These are all things I lump together when I say politics and acting. And these are all the things that have nothing to do with acting and have all the things to do with anything that can affect you not getting on camera or, or getting an acting job. Hey, so that's basically what this episode is all about. And as always, if you have any questions or any topics you want to share about anything, just leave it in the comment box of the episode. I'll check it out and I'll work to find an answer for you if I don't already know it and do an episode about your questions. Thank you so much for tuning in to Breaking Down the Barriers. My name is Fitz Houston. See you next time. God bless.